Yeah, those bros deserve it. All right. This mic is hot. This microphone is hot, and so is my temper. Because, I mean, granted, look, I just posted a video, and nobody's watched it. Congratulations to me. I also successfully changed my channel name to Diverse Gamer. I am Diverse Gamer. Diverse one. Anyway, so, yeah. Just rendered. This is why this is happening right now. Uh, the Congress of the United States of America just rendered a verdict. Uh, 57 voted guilty, 43 voted not guilty, split mainly along party lines, except for, you know, seven, yeah, seven Republicans, yeah, seven Republicans voted, uh, th that treason is illegal. <laughs> no, no, fif oh, 57 said guilty, and for... 57 and 43 said, no, wait, 57 said guilty of treason, uh, and, uh, 43 said not guilty. Oh, well, because the threshold for impeachment is, uh, you need, um, they needed seven more, so they need, you need 64, it's a two-thirds majority. So a simple majority will not... You know, simple majorities in Congress only work for budget reconciliation items, which, you know, hey, there's a case to be made. Impeachment should be a budget reconciliation item. Um, anyway, like... And, and the funny thing is, you know, people, like you were saying earlier, people have been talking about, like, oh, well, what if we just decide we want to start impeaching all of your former presidents. Oh, we're going to come after Obama and stuff. And it's like, okay. All right. First of all, like, what treasonous actions? At what point did Barack Hussein Obama, with his, you know, dubious sounding name, okay, I grant you that. Uh, at what point did he call on a squad of goons, a goon squad, to storm the Capitol and attempt to murder his own vice president and and members of Congress in an attempt to overthrow the government and overturn the will of the people. Like, that never happened. It's never happened for any other president ever in the history of ever. Because, you know, um, Donald Josefina Trump is a weak a uh, spineless little petulant child who, like, can't handle it when, oh, why isn't everyone saying I'm the best? Well, how about you act like the best? Boo, that sounds hard. Boo, <laughs> why don't you just say it and have it be true? Like, ugh, boo. And these idiots in Congress who, like, um, they're like, well... Oh, okay, this is going to be Mitch McConnell and his, um, you know, how certain species of lizard have a, a sack in their throat that they can inflate to ward off predators. Yeah, this is Mitch McConnell with neck sack fully inflated. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, shut up, terrible precedent uh, for the people of the United States. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm going to be an impartial juror. I have to look at the evidence. <laughs> like, I swear to God. I, I swear on the sweet Jesus' holy hands, both full of holes and holy because they've been touched by God, and he is God, and God, and he are one, and three, and one, and one, and three, and puppeteering. He like, he like Frank Oz. You know what? That's how they should explain the Trinity. And kids be like, I don't understand. How can God and Jesus? And they'd be like, well, have you ever seen an episode of The Muppet Show? Anyway, regardless, okay, let's not be distracted from the point. 
Like, because we are so polarized as a nation, when something very important actually happens, like, okay, know this. I don't actually give that much of a crap about, you know, uh, petty partisan nonsense. Like, I have lived through Democratic presidents. I have lived through Republican presidents. I have voted for Republicans. I have voted for Democrats. I have done both. I am generally speaking a moderate. And so like, um, yeah, it doesn't bother me that like Republican policies are being passed as much as it bothers me that the current iteration of the Republican party is all about holding on to what remains of power they have rather than actually doing anything with any moral backbone whatsoever. It's like, how the crap are you the jerks that get the, you know, the evangelical vote, the most rabidly fanatical religious section of the American vote? You get that vote in spite of the fact that you're like, oh, we don't care that he cheats on his wife. You know, we don't care that, like, oh, so he was with a porn star a month after his wife had given birth and she was spanking him on the butt with a rolled up magazine uh, with a picture of his face on the cover. And then he used campaign funds, $130,000 of campaign funds, a campaign finance violation, by the way, illegal for those of you keeping track at home. Um, the, the, he would do that and like, you know, that's not even, that's not even the worst. That's not even the worst thing that he's done. It's like, we don't even go after him for the, you know, the multiple breaches of the emoluments clause. We don't even go after him for the campaign viol uh, finance violations. We don't even go after him. And people be like, oh, it's a witch hunt. It's a hoax. How dare you try to impeach him? It's like, okay, calm the frick. On that, first of all, look, either we live in a world in which there are facts or we do not. And if we don't, if we don't live in a world of facts, then everyone should kill themselves. And I'm not kidding. Like, if there are no facts and it's all just purely relative, then first of all, killing yourself is not immoral. It's, it's totally fine. And you can't argue that it's not because my morality now says that it's totally fine because that's how the universe works now, apparently. Um, number one. And number two, like, who would want to live in a world without facts, without a fact-based reality, you know? Because if there is no fact-based reality, my question to you is this. How do you get your pants on in the morning? How do you cover your butt? Like, let's all assume that you have a butt, first of all. Which, like, if we can't agree on a fact-based reality, I don't even know if you have a butt. Like, it's, like, the degree to which everything falls apart if we cannot agree on simple facts about the world, it, it's staggering. It's mind-blowing. Like, look, uh, even if, even if everything were purely subjective, it is to our benefit to act as if it is purely objective. Why? Because if it were purely subjective, then there would be no... You, you could have no morality, you could have no rationality, you could never uh, make any definitive statement that a certain course of action is bad from a moral standpoint, because it could always be argued that, you know, given the, you know, wild swings of the morality of others, that they could find circumstances in which, under their relative morality, that actions that you know, normal people, quote unquote, which granted there could not possibly be normal people in a, uh, in a purely subjective reality. And I would argue that subjective, it's not even a reality at that point. How could you claim that that is reality? It's 
purely. Well, uh, yes, and it's not only that like nothing is real anymore. It's that like uh, it's not the same real for all people. Like I am communicating via words right now, and words like okay, let's not fall into the trap of saying that there are Aristotelian forms out there which correspond to a perfect version of the object or idea encapsulated by my words. We could say that, that each word is a reference uh, and there, there is a thing or an idea to which there is a... Yeah, I think a shot glass just bit the dust. Anyway... Oh, the hot sauce? It's okay, it was the empty one, wasn't it? The small Ho one? Hopefully. Anyway. Is there hot sauce on glass or hot sauce on the floor? Okay. Okay, this hot sauce discussion is breaking up my hot rant. Anyway. Your hot sauce. Yeah, my hot sauce is spitting out my mouth. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, like, we, we, okay, okay, please go, I'm in the middle of recording, uh, anyway, so, for the love of sweet, merciful baby Satan, uh, here's the fact, like, the, the fact that I'm able to say words, and you are able to conjure up in your brain a semblance of the meaning that I intend, means that there must be a reality which exists, which is universal for the both of us. Otherwise, otherwise, we do not actually understand one another. Now, you could argue that, like, well, perhaps we don't understand one another but we uh, have enough of an understanding to say that we do. Well, that's fine. Like, that's close enough. Even if the subjective is so near to the objective that it makes no difference whether we call it subjective or objective. Like, okay, at that point, we're just splitting hairs. Like, it, it, like let's not split hairs and still say that we did not split hairs. Like, at that point... It becomes an operational objectivity, and we all just need to continue laboring under the assumption that it's fine, <laughs> like that that we have a, that we have an objective reality in which we can share an understanding of what is and is not real, you know, like like adults. Anyway. And so I am able to communicate these ideas to you. And if you haven't taken philosophy classes, you may have a harder time understanding exactly what I'm getting at. Uh, or perhaps I'm doing a terrible job of explaining. But that would not mean that there is no objective reality that we share. Or at least a subjective that is indeed so similar that it might as well be objective. And we can all you know, call it the operational objective. Ah, I'm going to die with lava. Anyway, the operational objective, m meaning that uh, it is operationally so close to an objective that you might as well call it that because calling it anything else is absurd. Anyway, so, yeah. If we have an objective reality, then we can objectively have concepts like, for example, treason, you know, to betray one's country. And I would argue, and this is this is not a partisan argument, this is not like, ooh, he's going bully pulpit on the freaking, you know, uber liberalism. No, no, back the freak off. Like, this is not that. This is not that at all. Uh, it can be argued very well and very easily that um, that treason, to betray one's country, to attempt to overthrow one's country, if, we, if I say those words and you understand those words, we, we can agree that that is 
you know, from a, an objective or at least a subjective, which approaches the objective so closely that it might as well be objective, we could say with a certainty that that is a bad thing for society, for the good of all. You know, because there's no purpose for society existing except for the good of all. You know, why do we have governments? Well, governments exist to preserve the rights of the people and to provide lives of stability under which we can, you know, seek out our dreams of, you know, life, liberty, and property, or life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, depending on, you know, who you ask and when you ask them. But the fact of the matter is, if we cannot agree on what constitutes a betrayal of that society, then we cannot keep the society intact. It's as simple as that. Like, if we cannot agree, the the uh, station under which uh, the society that we've been attempting to build has been breached and indeed broken then uh, we are not capable of maintaining the society itself. And that is highly problematic for so many reasons. But, like, y you know, uh, imagine that I opened up a Pizza Hut franchise. Okay? And let's say that I am the night manager of said Pizza Hut franchise. Um, and, you know, let's say that every uh, so often we try to decide, you know, do we keep the same night manager of this Pizza Hut franchise or do we want to do we want to take it in a different direction? Right. Normal thing to do. You know, there there can be changes in, in leadership. OK, so we have our Pizza Hut franchise. We're trying to decide whether or not uh, this Pizza Hut franchise should continue under my leadership or whether it be under someone else's. Okay, awesome. Very simple concept, all right? Let's say that we uh, decide to, uh, you know, determine who gets to be the night manager of this Pizza Hut franchise by, uh, you know... Um, putting either crushed peppers into a hat or Parmesan cheese, you know, one of the two. And, and that, that's, that is your ballot, you know, uh, either a crushed pepper or a Parmesan cheese. Now, let's say that I'm crushed pepper because, frankly, that is the topping that I prefer. Given the choice between the two, I do like a good Parmesan cheese, but crushed pepper, though. Anyway... Regardless, so let's say that I um, I am crushed pepper, and my uh, opponent is Parmesan cheese. Now, when we turn over the hat and count the little packets inside, if there is an odd number of people voting, then we will either have more crushed pepper than Parmesan cheese. Or more Parmesan cheese than crushed pepper. And, and it cannot be both. It cannot be both more crushed pepper and m more Parmesan cheese. It can't be both at the same time. Those are mutually exclusive propositions. It cannot possibly both be true. Okay? So let's say we overturn the hat and it's more Parmesan cheese. Or at least... Uh -huh. the uh, person uh, the person's reporting on the overturning of the hat uh, say that it's you know more crushed pepper than parmesan cheese or, or more parmesan cheese than crushed pepper all right okay so if i then am so very unhappy with the uh, outcome of of this you know Parmesan crushed pepper election process uh, th that I call upon my people to like violently overthrow the uh, newly elected Parmesan people and like 
and and they do so like they violently like they go in and like just absolutely ransack the uh pizza place they just tear it apart and they steal stuff out of it and uh they kill the security guard you know like something horrible like that like not only under those circumstances would i not be allowed to like like no one would say well you should definitely be allowed to run for night manager of the pizza place again given the fact that like when you lost this time you called on your goon squad to like overthrow the pizza place and to um yeah violently um you know cause damage to no don't burn my okay anyway violently cause damage to the pizza place and its other employees like um and let's say that for instance the uh the, the goon squad that i called in were chanting to um <sighs> you know, uh, murder the, uh, to murder my assistant night manager who, uh, Was the yeah, yeah, who, who, who didn't, uh, yeah, didn't freaking invent the number that was in the cap. He just turned the hat over, you know, like he, he had nothing to do with the number of packets in the hat. Just is the one who turned it over and was like, well, this is the way it went. You know, like, if if my goon squad was <laughs> openly calling for the death of the assistant night manager, like, first of all, okay, how much of that is my fault? I'm the one who said that I that, that it was rigged and stolen from me. I'm the one who w went and held, a, you know, a rally outside the pizza place on the day of the turning over of the hat. And, uh, and I'm the one who said, well, if it doesn't go our way, then you're going to have to, you know, fight like hell to get your pizza place back. You know, is God forbid that your pizza place not be the, exactly the way you wanted it. Anyway, uh, you know, under such circumstances, like, there, there'd be no circumstance, like, take any other job, any other organization, like, if the outgoing uh, leader of that organization <laughs> calls for the violent overthrow of the newly elected leader of that organization... It's like, no, you don't get to do this anymore. You're done. Like, it's not that hard to see why you wouldn't want a person who calls for the violent overthrow to not be in charge. Like, I'm sorry. I, I'm not making up concepts. Like, I know that, like, my whole pizza place thing is very hackneyed and ridiculous. It's, like, a very dumb metaphor for what's happened. But, like... What I'm trying to show is that, like, even in a dumb metaphor scenario, like, it, what has happened doesn't make any sense. And it's not that I'm outraged that, like, oh, my party deserves to have more power than the other party. Nope. Nope. I, I firmly believe in the principles of democracy. If more people actually believe that you know, in, in Parmesan over, or, you know, in, in, uh, yeah, spicy peppers over Parmesan or whichever way the people go, like, I understand and acknowledge that just from the get-go, before any packets have been put into hats, like, I go in with the understanding that, like, this is the process. This is how we do it. Like, because, why is this the way that we do it? Because we have a system in place that empowers the people to make choices. You know, and like, if I were lying about the outcome of the putting the, 
putting the packets in the hat and being like, now, uh, yeah, you know, and, and I got a drippy drip of a lawyer to be like, yeah, uh, definitely some irregularities there. And then that drippy drip of a lawyer lost, you know, more than 60 court cases arguing in favor of my right to continue as night manager of the pizza place. Like, uh, it would become very apparent that I am not supposed to be the night manager of the pizza place anymore based on the fact that more people want Parmesan than crushed red pepper. I mean, like, it's a very basic concept. I know that I'm belaboring this metaphor entirely too much. But, like, th this is how stupid it is. It is this stupid to where I guarantee you there's not a pizza place on this planet that is run more effectively than this. And, you know, like, I swear to God, the, the things that have gone on, like, Josh Hawley, who... You know, we all know he wants to run for president. He wants to be the next Donald Trump. You know, and, and first of all, I would be suspicious of anyone that has that as a, a freaking life goal. Really? That's that's who you want to be? Like, I have some hard questions about your brain and its alleged functions. Ugh. God, like, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I really and truly, I've tried to understand, and I legitimately do not. I don't get it. I don't understand anyone who's like, no, that's fine. That's totally fine. Like, people commit treason, and it's okay. And then you just let them get away with it. Well, why do you let them get away with it? Well, because they did it in the last, you know, week of their night managership of the pizza place. Like, what? No. Like, uh, honestly, you try and explain it in any other, in any other way, and it's just the absurdity. The absurdity is overwhelming. Like, you can't even begin. And... The, the fact is, like, okay, the, uh, the defense lawyers, who, first of all, didn't even know they were defense lawyers, come out being like, yeah, I'm the lead prosecutor, I mean defense lawyer, like, really? This is who you got. And, you know, and then the other side is like, here is never before seen footage that shows clearly what happened and why it was even worse than we thought. You know, and and why it is absolutely tied to this douchebag who thinks that he should run things. And why does he think that he should run things? Is it because he's an unnaturally skilled leader? No, it's because he's a small man with a big ego. You know, and that's it. It's all small man, big ego. And that does not qualify you to hold public office. Mon frere, like, it, it does not. You cannot be like, oh, but I need to have my ego stroke, therefore I ought to be president of the United States. Get the frick out. Get out. It's not how this world works. Anyway, it's so very upsetting because, honestly, I don't know how much longer this country can last. Like, we are collectively dumber than we have ever been. It is absurd and obscene that, you know, QAnon is allowed to uh, perpetuate itself online. You know, we, we have this group of people who literally and actually believe that, uh, you know, um, that Democrats and uh, Democratic-leaning celebrities are raping and eating babies and that the only person who can help save us is Donald Josefina Trump 
and you know, noted philanderer and non-religious person who only believes in himself and nothing else. Like that—that th that is the man who is going to save us. He is designated by God Himself to save us from these horrible, horrible Democrats who drink the blood of babies. Like what? Yeah, and coincidentally, the pizza chain analogy, very apt, because where do they drink the blood of babies? In pizza restaurants! Are, are you sure that's not marinara? I mean, they have marinara in pizza restaurants. I just dip your finger in. Just check. Just check. Before you call the FBI... Just kidding. The FBI is deep state. They're compromised. My god, I swear... You know, when when the internet first came out, and I am old enough to, like, this is a sentence I enjoy saying because it's true, but I also enjoy it because it's very old. It's the kind of sentence that you have to say with this kind of a voice. The first time I ever used the internet, it was text only. I, I dialed up on a 26K modem to a locally hosted BBS. <laughs> like, that is a very old thing to say. Text only internet using a BBS. <sighs> anyway, regardless, the, the fact is, um, I go way back with the internet. And when the internet was first emerging, everybody was very excited because they were like, oh my god, you can read every play Shakespeare ever wrote from the comfort of your own computer chair you don't need to go to the library you don't need to go to a bookstore you can just sit there and read the complete works of shakespeare and then you know granted the vast majority of our internet space is dedicated to pornography as number one but number two the, the, like the parts that aren't um are just so wildly uh misguided with like the way that they are, you know, splintered and factioned and they are uh, in a state where they can just... It doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe the dumbest thing ever. You know, let's say that I choose to believe that, um, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan is still president and that uh, there's a spaceship coming to collect all the good people who still follow Reagan, and um, that you have to, um, you know, uh, stab every uh, Democratic voter that you see with a chopstick, uh, you know, just to make sure that you maintain your holiness before the almighty Reagan. Like... I mean, that's a dumb thing. I just made that up. It's incredibly stupid. There's no reason why any rational human being would ever believe something so absurd. Except for the fact that, like, you, if you believe something that stupid, you can find a forum online where you can just surround yourself with only people who believe the exact same thing that you do. And anyone who doesn't believe what you believe, you, then you and your cronies can just, you know, uh, decry them as, you know, morally bankrupt and deplorable people who just don't get it, you know. And so um, you can maintain these bubbles of stupidity. And, you know, frankly, all of the uh, companies, I, I wish that we had like a national center for media accuracy and not not so much for you know your mainstream media sources but for internet sources you know like honestly uh i know that you know net neutrality and i know that you know the, the ability of the internet to be free the democratization of information you know i believe very much in these things but i also, we're seeing, you know, it's the same thing w when you realize that Ayn Rand is full of crap um, because, you know, her idea that the best and most moral people on the planet are the millionaires and billionaires. And, and then Enron and WorldCom happen and you're like, well, maybe maybe I was mistaken about that most moral part. 
Um, you know, because someone driven by that much greed uh, cannot be the most moral. Anyway, so uh, you see the inherent flaws with that kind of reasoning, and you're like, okay, well, then there needs to be some sort of regulation. You know, like, it's not, uh, I mean, honestly, uh, um, here's the big idea, people. We have a government, not that it won't regulate, which is the absurd thing that Republicans keep pushing, like, oh, why did the government regulate? That's so terrible. And it's like, no, no, that's kind of your job. Like, we want you to regulate because um, we want you to protect and preserve the rights of the people and their rights to life, liberty, and property, or life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, depending upon whom you ask. And uh, so, you know, it is the government's job, it's the government's responsibility to enact laws to that effect. To make things happen, which make it possible for people to uh, maintain those rights that they have. And like... You know, if we enjoy things like the right to vote, for instance, in my own state, the, there was a bill introduced that would allow um, the state legislature to overturn any election for no reason. Like, they don't need a reason. They could just overturn the result of an election if they don't like it for whatever reason. And that opens the door to exactly what you think like think about it for a half second and you're right that would be terrible you know and it doesn't matter whether republicans or democrats are doing it it matters that you have the will of the people and then people go and overturn it and and that's the stupid thing like you know seven million more people and this is Either we live in a world with facts which can be known, or we do not. And if we do, then one of the facts about the world that we have to accept is that more people wanted Joe Biden to be president than wanted Donald Trump to be president. Now, will I argue that no people wanted Donald Trump to be president? No. It's shocking and absurd that people did want him to be president ever, but that's how I feel about it. That's not how they feel about it. And I have to accept the fact that everyone in this country who is of age and meets the requirements, you know, is allowed to vote. And I accept that. If the outcome had been differently, I would have been upset. But would I have gotten together with my goons to, like, storm the Capitol and try and murder people? No, I would not. Why? Because I believe in the founding principles of this freaking country. And to see what is happening is shocking and it's absurd and it's, it, it's so deeply, deeply harmful. It, it just, it, it breaks my heart as an American that, like, that I should ever live to see people being so partisan, so petty, and so short-sighted that they are setting a precedent under which, like, any president can commit any crime in the final days of his presidency, and we need to just suck it up and accept that. And, and if the crime is to openly call for a violent overthrow of the United States government, then so be it. <laughs> you know, it, okay, here's the thing. Let's talk about the First Amendment for a second, because this is actually important. Okay, people get the First Amendment wrong all the time. You know, people are like, I should be allowed to drop F-bombs wherever I want because I have First Amendment rights. Now, let's say that in the future, I wanted this video to be monetized. I chuckled because, like, I, I, frankly, I don't expect anybody to watch this. But I'm, I'm laying this down so that there's a record of me being rational in a time when rationality is, like, falling by the wayside. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, l let's say that for some reason in the future, I'm like, let's, 
monetize this video, right? If I drop a string of F-bombs right here, YouTube could justifiably say, well, guess what? That string of F-bombs that you left means that your video is not allowed to be monetized because we don't let people drop copious F-bombs in videos and have them be monetized. This, we're YouTube and that's not how we work, you know? And so, like, th they can make that determination. Why can they? Oh, that's so an American. Boo, boo. I, get, I have free speech. No, 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 no. <coughs> Your free speech, your First Amendment is all about you having the right to not be prosecuted by the government for things that you say. But, okay, there are things which, you know, there are checks and balances on your free speech. What? But I thought we were free. Well, to a point. I mean, obviously, the idea of any freedom in America is underlined by this fact that your freedoms end at the tip of my nose. Like, you don't have the right to have freedoms that override my freedoms. That's not how that works. And so there need to be checks on the concept of freedom, which mean that um, your freedoms are not, uh, you know, unlimited, because they couldn't possibly be. Because, you know, if you are free to an extent that it makes me unfree, then your freedoms are unjustified. I mean, it's just basic, basic ideas of democracy. Anyway, so the fact of the matter, this is uh, the Mrs.'s is house. She makes fantastic things. Like, I don't, I'm not good with decorating and stuff. Yeah, you do, and I need to uh, get. Some... Yeah, well, you're not in the server anyway. Uh, I need to steal the wheat so that I can. Um, here, I'm gonna plant it back though. I'm I'm a good, I'm a gentleman. Anyway, but but the fact is, I'm gonna try and feed Luna's cows because I'm trying to get a bajillion cows in a very small pen. Anyway, because comedy reasons. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, your rights end at the tip of my nose because they have to, because there has to be a, a hard cap, a limit on where the, the, the degree to which rights extend, you know, just basic, basic concepts. And, you know, so for example, very famously, every school child knows this one. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Oh, why not? I thought there were no... Come on, man. I thought there were no limits on my freedoms. Well, there are limits on your freedoms because if you yell fire in a crowded theater, uh, someone might be trampled to death. And in fact, I believe historically was trampled to death. If, anytime you get... a an interesting rule like that, you know that it exists because someone broke it at some point, and that is how, yeah, make more cows, more cows in this tiny pen. Do it. It is my bidding. Anyway, so, um, yes, we grow large, you baby cows. Um, anyway, uh, your rights, tip of my nose. Oh, fire in a crowded theater. Yeah, yelling fire in a crowded theater is dangerous if there's no fire. Obviously, if there's a fire in a crowded theater, yelling fire is fine. It, in fact, will save lives, and please do it. But if there is no fire, and you're being a hilarious prankster, and you're like, ooh, yell fire, and then someone gets trampled to death, yeah, then you are liable for the death of people who died because you said something that put other people at, in danger. Like, that's a pretty simple idea that is not very difficult to get behind. And as a matter of fact, has been decided by our Supreme Court and is, you know, a part of our legal system. Like, we believe that that is true. That, like, yes, you cannot just yell fire in a crowded theater because of all the reasons. 
I'm going to go feed Steinmiller's cows because I feel bad for killing some of them earlier. Uh, this is before he had them penned in. They were just near his house. And he's like, oh, I need to pen in these cows. And I was like, oh, I need to stop murdering them, I guess, because I had murdered them. And that was... It was wrong. I mean, I needed leather, but... Um, you... Yes, just to say what you will, but know that you are being... Yeah, you can. Mom will help you. Yeah, anyway. So my daughter may or may not be joining the Minecraft soya. Anyway, okay. Back to the idea about First Amendment rights. First Amendment rights are about, uh, you know, protecting you from being unjustly prosecuted by the government for things that you say. You're allowed to have your own ideas, thoughts, and opinions in America, and that's totally fine. No matter how stupid your opinions are, you are allowed to have them. We don't have checks on your stupid opinions. Um, so feel free to be stupid. Huh? Like that Weird Al song that is, you know, so fantastically similar to a Devo song. It's, it's really quite breathtaking. Yeah. Dare to be stupid. Anyway, regardless. Uh, the fact is, like, you can. You can be a very stupid person in America, and there are no checks on your stupidity. Um, other than, you know, a, a free and public a free public education, in which we try to make you not stupid, but if you persist in stupidity, then that's your own business. We, we don't necessarily support it, but we don't condemn it either. It's America. Anyway, so, yeah, you get to be stupid, but what if your stupidity leads you to openly call for a violent overthrow of the United States government? Is that uh, covered by free speech? Fun fact, and feel free to look this up. No, it's not. You are not allowed under the Constitution of the United States and its interpretation is delivered to us by the Supreme Court over the many years in which they have been hearing these First Amendment cases. Uh, they have told us, they have affirmed the fact that you cannot yell fire in a crowded theater, or ye yell fire in a crowded theater is illegal, and you cannot um, call for the violent overthrow of the United States government. Uh, can you call our leaders idiots? Like, can you say that uh, Donald Trump is a rotting pumpkin? Sure, you could say Donald Trump is a rotting pumpkin with, um, you know, the uh, morals of a Russian oligarch. Like, sure, yeah, you can say that. You can say that all you want. There's no problem. Uh, if you print it in the press, you might be subject to uh, slander and libel laws, but uh, honestly, you know, more or less, you can say what you want, but you cannot call for a violent overthrow of the United States government. Um, and so, given that fact, I mean, Trump's defense lawyers, who were, they had giant hams for fists, these idiots, like... I have never been to law school, and I am a better lawyer than either of those morons. Because I've watched an episode of Matlock, you know? Like, I am a better lawyer than those idiots. Uh, just because uh, I have an IQ high enough to manage things like tying my own shoes. Yeah, my cows are getting ridiculous again. Soon, but I'll do that when I'm not recording because I don't want you to see me being cruel to animals anyway other than the cow that I slaughtered earlier um, but yeah First Amendment rights yes you have a right to be stupid yes you have a right to say a lot of stupid things and not be prosecuted by the government but if one of the things that you want to say is that um, you and a bunch of your friends should go down and violently overthrow the government um, guess what? You can be held criminally liable for such statements. Now, did the president and former president, thank God, of the United States openly call 
for the violent overthrow? Yes, he did. He did. And we caught it and broadcasted it on television for anyone to see. Like, you know, one of the great problems with the Trump administration is that he commits his crimes in public. Like, I mean, remember when um, he openly called on Russia to find Hillary's emails? Now, I would tell you this in case you think I'm being wildly partisan. I don't like Hillary Clinton, nor do I like any member of the Clinton family. Never have. Don't suspect that I will. So eat that with a fork and spoon. Like, I, I don't like the Clintons. And so any statement that I make about them, take with the understanding that I just don't like the Clintons. Um, so, yeah, am I being wildly partisan? Yeah, totally, totally. I'm just a partisan hack. I just only say things that I hear on MSNBC. Just kidding. That, that is that is not true. It's this new thing called sarcasm. Just you wait. It's gonna catch on. It's gonna be the new the new big thing. Sarcasm. Anyway, so disappointing that uh, you know my children have to grow up in a nation where um, our democracy is has been under assault and continues to be under assault by the very party which claims to love it most. You know, that's what's really worrying about it. Is that, like, when it comes to hyper-patriotism and big, showy shows, I mean, Donald Trump was the first president to ever grope the American flag. Like, he groped it. He grabbed it by the... <clears throat> Just kidding. I'm a gentleman. I don't, I, I don't say things like that. Therefore, I'm not qualified to be president of the United States because I don't use the slanderous term for the female genitals. Anyway. <sighs> God. Like, the times that we are living in, it makes me want to be. And remember, it, it's not that I'm like, Oh, you know, uh, I can't live with Republican governance. I have lived with Republican governance, and I've been mo more, not, uh, more or less fine. Like, um, you know, like I'm, I'm not some ridiculous partisan uh, hack. I just, I really and truly believe that America should be a representative republic. I mean, it's not a democracy in the strict Latin sense of the word, but, like, I mean, we do have the ability of the people to vote for our leaders, and I, I find it upsetting and absurd that, uh, you know, slightly less than half of the country is voting for leaders which do not uphold the bedrock principles of our democracy. Because that's where we are. And I, I hate it. I really, really hate it. Because I don't like partisan nonsense. I don't like the, you know, I don't like the fact that neighbors can't see eye to eye. Like, um, I really hated uh, when there was a turn, there was a change in Facebook. You know, I joined Facebook back when you used to have you used to have to have a .edu email address because it was originally created for college students. You know, back when the Zuckerbot was a college student itself. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, you'd get on there and you'd be like, ooh, she's cute, I'm going to poke her. <laughs> and like, because poking was a thing, look it up. Pull out some historical documents. Uh, still do sometimes. Anyway, regardless, we're, we're married. It's okay. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, there was a change when, you know, it became this hyper political space. Um, and, 
you know, frankly, that's why I no longer no longer use it. Okay, and and don't say out loud what that number is, because even though nobody watches these videos, also also I don't need like it. You could crash my server if a Raspberry Pi joined it. Like it's. It's already 42 ticks behind. Anyway, regardless, people, like, you know, um, we've had political parties come and go in the United States. We have. You know, where are the Whigs? The Whigs. They're no longer around. Um, oh, hello. Yeah, that user sounds cute. Uh, look at you, you're in your cute little house. Do you need me to go to sleep so that you can, uh, not have creepers come in your no, house? No, it's, uh, I've got the ones in the walking room. Alright, alright, you're good. Well, I guess I would Yeah, it's night time, so, uh, get to the village, Buggasnug. Not saying your real name because I'm, you know, uh, making video content. And you are very much a minor. Anyway, so yeah, people like. I, I, no, I have not. Anyway, what? No, I didn't. Oh, have you? Probably, because you're not responsible like me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I don't even know how well the microphone is picking you up, to be honest. It's barely picking me up. So, um. <laughs> you, you know I don't do edits anyway um so yeah people like the the whigs are are gone the no nothings are gone by the way the no nothings were created oh yeah okay the no nothings were created as a strictly anti catholic uh, political party because remember when Italians and Irish people weren't white yeah anyway they, they were not white because the concept of whiteness has changed drastically over the years I know I know these are all constructs these are games that we choose to play we opt into them anyway so yeah people um, we have had parties fall by the wayside. And why do they fall by the wayside? Because they no longer serve the purpose that they were intended for, or we decide that the purpose that they are serving is no longer needed. And, um, you know, if the purpose of the Republican Party is to fight against democracy and to, you know, like, I, I've said it before, I've said it before and I will say it again because, you know, no one listens to these and so I can say whatever I want. But um, any organization, doesn't matter what the organization is, but they all, over time, they stop serving the needs of their members and they begin existing to only perpetuate their own existence. And it doesn't matter what the organization is. It could be a social club, it could be a church, it could be a political party, it could be a political organization, it could be anything. A book club, I don't know, who, who cares? Any organization that exists for a sufficiently long enough period of time and, you know, survives its founding members and um, continues to grow and change over time it will uh, begin to serve its own existence more than it serves the needs of its party members and um, and certainly you can see that with the Republican Party that we have today does the Republican Party today serve the needs of its members well perhaps the oh I'm sorry, Buggasnug, about your creeper death. Anyway, but it does not serve the needs of its members who are, by and large, uh, working-class people. 
you know, by and large working class people and, um, you know, people who are not served by violent overthrows of democracy, um, people who are not served by uh, lies and propaganda. I mean, it. Um, it's been it's been measured. Our outgoing president uh, said more than thirty thousand lies to the American people while in um, while in power. Over thirty thousand lies. And look, I hate our outgoing president as a human being. Like I think he's a terrible human being. And I thought so long before he ever had aspirations of government. I thought so when he was still contributing to the um, uh, Senate campaigns of people like Kamala Harris. You know, uh, I have thought that he's a terrible person for a long, long time. And I have hated him for a long, long time. Perhaps hate is too strong a word. I've, I've had no respect for him for a long, long time. Uh, I've found, found him morally vapid and, um, you know, uh, just an absolute awful human being for, for a long, long time. Because, I don't know, I don't like the concept of anyone being that selfish. Anyway, I'm going to go find out what's, like, beating up the side of our house. Hold up, I'll be right back. Feel free to talk. Okay, this is my chance. I'm going to make my YouTube debut while he's gone. Um, I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free. As the men who died, who gave that right to me, I'll proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. He's coming back. What was that? This is that wire mesh thing that you use for sifting gravel. It's crazy windy outside right now. And, uh, yeah, super, super windy. And so it's, uh, anyway. So, yeah, like, um, I'm not saying this as someone who's like rubbing his grubby paws together and saying, <laughs> if we could only get rid of the Republicans. But like, you know, I, I firmly believe that, you know, the Democratic Party is the party of ineptitude, you know, <laughs> like they are the party of not being good at getting things done. Um, you know, if this was O.J. Simpson on trial for a murder that we all know, knew he commit, and it was up to the Democratic Party to uh, convict him, the outcome would have been the same as it was when he was on trial for a murder that he definitely committed. Anyway, so, like, um, I, I, I'm not concerned about petty partisan gains, I'm just concerned about whether or not one of our two political parties is so uh, corrupted and morally bankrupt that we shouldn't even have it anymore. And, and it's not that I'm saying that we shouldn't have a conservative movement. Like, honestly, I think that we should have a multi-party system because the fact that I can't vote for a monster raving loony candidate like they have in Great Britain. They have the monster raving loony party, which exists only to make fun of British politics. And that's it. That's, that's their only platform point is that this is absurd. Let's make fun of it. 
And the fact that American politics doesn't have that kind of a thing, you know, the fact that we don't have room, I, I am frankly concerned about anyone who can look at our two political parties and say that either one of them accurately and completely represents their interests as a human being. <laughs> like, I, I am concerned about you if that is true. I, I think of the great thing that um, uh, Louis Black, one of our foremost political comedians, uh, what he said about our two-party system. He said the American two-party system is like a bowl, a steaming bowl of crap looking at itself in the mirror going, Ew. <laughs> And that's that's pretty accurate. I can get on board with that. Um, anyway, uh, but like it, it might be time to um, be done with the Republican Party and to create something new. And you know, it should not be the death of American conservatism. American conservatism is fine, like as an idea, but. Um, you know, we're always going to have a, you know, uh, a spectrum of political belief, and we need to have parties which support the spectrum of political belief. But when one of the parties has been corrupted to the point where it no longer serves the system under which it operates, um, then we need to really look deeper, take a deeper examination. Uh, anyway... I, I feel like I could go all day, but I'm just really disappointed. Now, granted, did I really think that we could get 14 Republicans to vote to convict uh, former President Donald Josefina Drumpf? Uh, no, I didn't. I was not laboring under the delusion that Republicans would do the right thing given the opportunity, and that's the problem, is that no one, no one really hoped, or no one really thought that they could do the right thing. Anyone who supposed that they might, uh, frankly, wasn't paying attention over the last several years of American political life. Uh, what a time we are living in. What a time we are living in. And, and it's funny because you know, people are acting like anything Biden has done, like, you know, uh, Mark Twain very famously said that w we pick a new president every four years so that we can pick on him for the next four, which is more or less true. Um, but the fact that the, um, you know, the propaganda wing of the uh, American Republican Party has already begun uh, castigating uh, Biden, begun pointing fingers and saying like, oh, you are scandalous, you Joseph Biden, uh, Robinette. What an absurd middle name for a president. Anyway, regardless, the fact is, like they're already pointing the finger at him as if anything that he has done is scandalous. And it's like, um, well, we set a bar for scandal with the previous president, which involved things like blackmailing a foreign nation to get political dirt on or to get dirt on a political opponent. Okay, so he hasn't done anything that bad. Um, you know, uh, he, according to the Mueller report, which I am one of the, I'm a, I'm a part of the seven percent of Americans that has actually read it, and I have read it cover to cover. Like, I bought a copy of it in book form and read it, and my God, was it boring. Oh, you need to go sleep? Yeah. All right. Anyway, but, like, I actually read it, and the Mueller report, when, okay, <laughs> so remember when Russia... Um, meddled in the 2016 election. It's not a question of did they or did they not. Every intelligence agency we have says that the answer is yes, they did meddle. 
They meddled in our election. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> yeah, Mueller report, they did meddle in our election. Did the uh, Trump election squad, did they um, collude with Russia? Not that that's a legal term which can result in anything. Um, no, it, it's not. And they didn't collude because, according to the report, they were too dumb to pull it off, which is, you know, that's just sweet. That's just cute. Um, I could snuggle up to that idea, hold it like a teddy bear. Uh, anyway, like... <laughs> Oh, God, the times we're living in, people. Um, anyway, so the Mueller report showed that, yes, in fact, Russia did meddle in our election. And, yes, uh, they favored a Trump administration more than a Clinton administration. And why did they favor a Trump administration? Well, because... The Trump administration was willing to cut deals on uh, sanctions, which were affecting Russian trade. This is known, Khaleesi. It, it is known. These are facts about the world which anyone can have access to if they desired. So, um, yeah, Russia got involved in our election processes, and they... Um, how big of an effect did they have? We don't know. We, we, it is hard to quantify. Like, are there people who voted for Trump who otherwise would have not voted for Trump had Russia not gotten involved in our election? It, it's impossible to say. And as a matter of fact, the Mueller report very conspicuously does not say. Um, and it's one of the reasons why, uh, um, Trump, why the first impeachment was a little more of an open question uh, than the second impeachment. Um, you know, the first impeachment, while I do not believe that it was strictly a partisan affair because, you know, uh, his first impeachment, sorry, he was never impeached for um, his involvement with anything having to do with Russia. He was impeached for uh, trying to blackmail the Ukraine uh, and trying to get dirt on Joe Biden. Anyway, um, but the fact is, like, the degree of scandal that our former president committed, you know, like the the types of scandals that that he was committing i mean to the point where like we absolutely ignored like i said we ignored we ignored his uh violations of the emoluments clause we ignored um his uh uh campaign finance violations because we had worse things to worry about. <laughs> you know, remember there for a little while when we were worried that he would start a nuclear war with North Korea just because he felt like it? Yeah. Yeah. Little Rocket Man, we all remember. Anyway, regardless, like, uh, there were legitimate, very legitimate things to be concerned about. And now we have a Republican Party which is pointing the finger at the Biden administration and saying like, oh, you guys aren't playing unity. You guys aren't playing fair. Me, 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 me. And you guys are being scandalous because the scandal of scandals and, you know, the scandals that they're pointing at are so, like, it's milk on toast. They are so absurdly... Um, you know, it, it would, you know, when people do like little kids, this is a little kid thing when, you know, little kid gets in trouble and it's like, Timmy, why were you doing X, Y, or Z? And they're like, well, Johnny was doing me. Well, I mean, the situation that we have now is like, um, 
you, you know, Timmy, why did you set the house on fire? Well, Johnny had two cookies when he was supposed to have one. And it's like, okay, are we making an equivalency? Because, you know, one of you does not have a leg to stand on if we're going to make equivalencies. <sighs> and it's not that I want to be wildly partisan. Look, very many people that I know and love and care about are conservative, are politically conservative, much more than, than I myself am. Um, and I am fine with that. I'm not worried about that. I'm not concerned about that. I don't try to convert them. Uh, to come around to my way of thinking, which is not a strictly liberal mindset, but a much more moderate with a leftist sort of event. But, like, I don't try to bring them around to my way of thinking. I accept that they believe what they believe. I do like to state my mind. Oh, God. I hate these guys. Oh, is that... I thought I saw a hint of blue, like that was a diamond block that they came out of, but they spoiled a diamond block so that they could exist. I'm going to murder the concept of silverfish. Also, they're going to destroy my diamond armor. Ugh. Let's look at my diamond armor. Okay, now my boots are gone. Thanks for that. I don't see any diamonds, so I suppose... You won't get too upset. But anyway, like, I promise I'm not upset with the concept of, you know, uh, conservative ideas or conservative governance. I believe that the American political system is very much like the swing of a giant pendulum and that, uh, you know, it should be allowed to swing back and forth. But I also believe in this, you know, uh, Ezra Klein, author of the book Why We're Polarized it was talking about how governance works in most countries in the world. And that is that, you know, in most countries, the winning party wins the right to govern <laughs> because they won. And so um, they won, so they get to act like the winners and you know, uh, enact their policies, you know, and in America, we have this stupid filibuster, which like is not the filibuster that you think, you know, it's not someone just talking and talking and talking like in, um, Mr. Smith goes to Washington starring the late great Jimmy Stewart. Uh, no, that's that's not it. That's not what it is. It, it's just become this very procedural thing that people just accept, you know. But one of the worst uh, answers to the question, why do we do this, whatever thing it is that we're doing, if the answer is, well, that's the way we've always done it, then that's a terrible, terrible answer. And whatever thing that that is, should probably change because you know anything that we do simply because we've always done it that way uh, should be subject to change should we should call it into question we should look at it we should ask is this the way that it needs to be if if it's done that way because you know uh <laughs> uh anyway uh sorry bug is not anyway um if it is done that way because the best and the brightest of us have sat down to hash out a political system that can work to the benefit of all, and this is legitimately the best thing that we have come up with, the, the best thing that our best and brightest minds has come up with, okay, that's different than, you know, we do it simply because that's the way it's always done. Anyway, so in most countries on Earth, the... Uh, the party that wins is allowed the right to govern. And then in the next election, uh, and, and then the, the losing party gets to criticize them until such time as there's another election. And then, uh, you know, and then the people get to decide whether or not the criticisms are justified. 
that that's totally fine sounds totally reasonable you know sounds like a way to have a country you know and and i'm not at all opposed to that type of a system you know if uh, if the party that is not my party wins then so be it if you know they win fairly and squarely without having to like i mean we could get into issues of gerrymandering and like you know, uh, the systems by which a party which does not appeal to the majority is able to win electorally and win, um, you know, systematically in a, uh, a broken system that uh, was created. Funny enough, the, the systems that allow this kind of crap to occur um, is the part of the system that was created to preserve the power of the slave states. Because the slave states were worried about losing power to abolitionist states. And we would not have been able to, uh, you know, have a constitution without the slave states. And so we catered to their whims. You can argue that we did so unwisely. I frankly understand that argument, but now we are paying a political price because we are um, working within a system where the minority party can just, you know, continually take their ball and go home. You know, during the Obama administration, uh, the number of times that the Republican Party, you know, took their ball and went home and then blamed the taking of the ball on Obama and his, like, oh, I swear to God, it was so absurd and absurdly stupid. But that is the system that we're in. It is not built on truth, logic, or reason. And the farther we get from truth, logic, or reason, you know, our founding fathers were inspired by the Enlightenment, an age of reason. And... Um, say what you will about their many flaws and foibles, and there are certainly many of those, but um, they believe in the ability of our nation to improve over time. They created a system by which our nation can improve over time and ought to improve over time. And I feel like we have lost sight of that. Oh, lovey, are you anywhere yeah, near? Are you but in my head? Are you anywhere near a bed? Yeah, she is in the bed. I'm, I can see her. I'm not in your bed, but I am in my bed. I still love villagers. And hey, villagers need beds. Anyway, people, I feel like the longer I go, I'm just belaboring the point. Just know that I'm disappointed. Like, there, let there be a public record of my disappointment with the fact that our highest legislative body has failed to hold accountable a man who called on his goons to overthrow our government. And how you, as a member of that body, that they were coming to kill and chanting and shouting to kill your colleagues, how you can look at that situation and be like, no, that, that sounds fine. That seems, let's not hold anyone accountable for that. That just, why, why would that be a thing that we do? <sighs> if that's how you behave and that's how you act, then perhaps we don't need your party anymore. You have outlived your usefulness. Let it be known. Got the list right here, okay? All of the Democrats voted for... Uh, removal from office. Voted that that uh, Donald Josefina Trump is guilty. Uh, John Barrasso of Wyoming did not. He is a traitor to the cause of freedom. And, and I don't say that lightly. I don't say it, you know, I don't call someone a traitor, uh, a you know, just because they don't agree with me. That's not the point. If you don't think that it should be illegal to call a goon squad 
to attempt to overthrow the government. If you don't believe in the illegality of that, then you're a traitor. If, if Not just as a regular citizen. If you're a regular citizen, believe what you want. It has little to no consequence. Uh, but if you are a member of our highest legislative body and it is your job to have oversight into the actions of those who called for the attempted overthrow of our government, if you did not uphold the illegality of calling, of openly calling for the overthrow of our government, the violent overthrow of our government, angry mob shitting in our capital. Sorry, I shouldn't say swear words. They pooped on the floor of our capital. The, you know, they murdered five people. They beat policemen with an American flag. If you don't think that that should be illegal, then you don't deserve to hold office. And so John Barrasso does not deserve to hold office. Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Roy Blunt of Mo, I'm guessing Missouri. Uh, John Boozman of Arkansas, Mike Brown of Indiana, uh, K. Richard Burr voted for conviction. Hmm, interesting. He was actually swayed because he he voted against the constitutionality of even holding an impeachment trial. Uh, Bill Cassidy voted to convict. Good for him. He looks. He, I believe he's the one who. Uh, you know, correctly pointed out that Trump's lawyers were an embarrassment and a joke, and that um, as an impartial juror, which is what the law of the land calls for him to be, that he said that he was actually swayed by the arguments of the other side. Good for you. Way to believe in democracy. I can't believe the bar is that low. Susan Collins of Maine. Voted to convict. Susan Collins, you often don't have a backbone. Congratulations on having a backbone this time. John Cornyn of Texas. John Cornyn, you betrayed the American people. I'm sorry that it is so. Tom Cotton, you betrayed the, the American people, and you seem to be proud of it. Uh, Kevin Kramer, same. Michael D. Crapo. <laughs> His name's Crapo. It's probably pronounced like, no, no, I'm sorry, it's Crapo. Nope, in my book, it's Crapo. Guilty, you are, of not finding the former president. Guilty of inciting a mob. We watched him do it live on television. Ted Cruz. Okay, Ted Cruz, when does it end? Trump said that your dad was involved in the assassination of JFK. Trump said that your wife was ugly on national television and you kiss his butt? Really? Really, Ted Cruz? Grow a backbone, you idiot. Also, your beard looks ridiculous. We, we can all agree. Steve Daines of Montana did not vote to convict. Betrayed the American people. Uh, Joni Ernst of Iowa betrayed the American people. Deb Fisher of Nebraska betrayed the American people. Lindsey Graham, this piece of work. Um, you know, I, I love that the Lincoln Project ran an ad uh, during this last election cycle um, in which they showed the words of Lindsey Graham before Trump became president. He told the truth, said that Trump was dangerous that he was irrational, that he was erratic, that he was um, not the sort of person who should hold the highest office in the land. And said that Joe Biden is as good a man as God ever put on the earth. His words about Joe Biden. Now he's acting like Joe Biden is Captain Scandal and acting like Donald Trump is, you know, the best thing since, you know, uh, butt smooching was invented. Anyway, uh, what do you even do? Anyway, yeah, Lindsey Graham, traitor to the American people. Chuck Grassley of Iowa, traitor and proud of it. Bill Haggerty, Tennessee, traitor. Um, Josh Hawley, 
traitor and proud of it. Like, look, Josh Hawley, if you love these violent insurrectionists so much, why did you flee for safety? Like, you, you pump your fist in the air like you're some sort of radical, and, uh, and then you flee for safety with everyone else. Why not stay and meet your new friends, Josh Hawley? You're going to give them that kind of support. Why not be there with them as they commit crimes? Anyway, uh, John Hoon of North Dakota, uh, traitor. Cindy Hyde-Smith, traitor. James Inhofe, traitor. Ron Johnson, traitor. John Kennedy, not those Kennedys, traitor. James Langford, traitor. Mike Lee of Utah, traitor and generally a moron. Uh, Cynthia Loomis of Wyoming, traitor. Roger Marshall of Kansas, traitor. Mitch McConnell, quite possibly the worst human being on the planet. Mitch McConnell would shoot your grandmother in the face if it meant that there was some small gain to be made by the Republican Party. Like, I, I kid you not. Like... He, he would murder a grandma if it meant that the Republicans could win a single Senate seat. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, he is, he is everything that is wrong with this Republican Party. Um, anyway, let's see. Uh, Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia, traitor to the American people. Jerry Moran of Kansas, traitor to the American people. Uh, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska voted as everyone figured that she would, like a rational, reasonable person. Um, why can't we have more people doing this? Like, why can't we have more Republicans who can look at facts objectively and make judgments as they are supposed to? Be a fair, impartial juror like you're supposed to. Come on, it's in the Constitution. Do you or do you not believe in the Constitution? Uh, Rand Paul. <laughs> Rand Paul makes me ill. It makes me ill to listen to the man. Like, he's on TV saying, like, oh, why do you hate black teenagers, Joe Biden, when, like, he openly hates democracy? Why do you hate democracy, Rand Paul? Ugh, God. You, you, you have problems with your brain. Ron, Rob Portman of Ohio betrayed our country. Jim Rich of Idaho betrayed our country. Mitt Romney, a man that I am distantly related to, uh, Mitt Romney did what was right. I mean, my God, why is that a rarity? Why is it rare to have someone like Mitt Romney who actually does the right thing when it comes down to it? Um, famously, here's just a fun little trip down history lane. Uh, Mitt Romney's father, George Romney, uh, was a politician, his own self, uh, in Michigan, uh, before the civil rights movement. And, um, he started, um, he started moving black people into white neighborhoods and people were incensed. But I mean, obviously, like you look at the history of redlining in America, and it is um, it, it's shameful what we have done to uh, the black Americans who have suffered long and hard at the hands of a government that does not seem to care much for their interests as a community. It's They have been betrayed time and time again. And you watch the footage of a brave, um, I don't remember his name, and possibly that is a problem with the media. It's probably a problem with my brain because I have a hard time remembering names. Uh, but that brave uh, police officer who um, led the angry mob away from the open door uh, behind which all the senators were cowering, um, you know, absolutely a hero, you know, such a hero. Anyway, so black people in America have been 
we all know, if you don't think they've been given the short end of the stick, read a book, Cyril. Like, I swear to God. Anyway, they have been historically marginalized, historically treated very poorly. And anyway, George Romney, Mitt Romney's father, started moving uh, African Americans into um, in, into white neighborhood, and um, he did this uh, at a time when it was just incredibly unpopular to do so. Just absolutely uh most americans did not uh agree with that as a course of action and you know the romneys very obviously are members of the mormon church uh leaders in the mormon church you can find these letters so they call themselves apostles the you know like jesus's apostles and there are apostles who wrote letters to George Romney telling him, oh, if you knew uh, what God intended, then you would know that it's wrong, that God doesn't want white people and black people to live together in America. It, you know, well, who was on the right side of history? George Romney was on the right side of history. Who's on the right side of history now? Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is saying that treason is illegal. Oh, I was literally just in bed. Yeah. Mitt Romney says treason is illegal. Lovey, do you want to find your bed? Yeah. Anyway, and, and good for him, but it should not be a novelty to have, you know, someone uh, come to that conclusion. Mike Rounds of South Dakota uh, did not vote to convict. He betrayed the American people. Marco Rubio, just an, a shame and an embarrassment, Marco Rubio, on so many counts. Um, ben Sass of Nebraska did the right thing. Congratulations, sir, on your continued uh, you know, ownership of backbone. Rick Scott of Florida, traitor. Tim Scott of South Carolina, traitor. Richard, Richard Shelby of Alabama, traitor. Dan Sullivan of Alaska, traitor. John Thune of South Dakota, traitor. Uh, Thom Tillis, just kidding. Tom Tillis of North Carolina, traitor. Patrick Toomey of Pennsylvania, he voted to convict. Good on you. Good for you. You did the right thing. Looked at the facts, saw what the facts were, voted correctly. Tommy Tuberville, which, by the way, like, how stupid is it that you can turn a football coaching career into a political career that easily in America? Uh, also, you know, if, if you want to weep for humanity sometime, go and look up the statistics of the highest paid public figure in um, the state by state and in the vast majority of the 50 states it is um, vast majority of the 50 states college football coaches in some states it's a basketball coach but yeah college football coaches are paid more well they're paid more than teachers tell you that much uh, but they're paid millions and millions of dollars for their coaching prowess and I'm not saying that it's you know super easy to coach college football um, I'm, I'm not making that statement at all but I am saying that it's weird that we assume that like oh he can coach a college football program therefore he can you know make big decisions for governance. Anyway, well, apparently he can't because he voted the wrong way. You know, the, the, a guy who, if it's snowing outside, apparently can't go online and find the news. Ugh, Tommy Tupperville, you are an embarrassment. Um, Roger Wicker betrayed the American people. And last but not least, Todd Young betrayed the American people. Let it be known that in 2021, uh, 
I firmly believe that Donald Josefina Drumpf betrayed the American people and should have been barred from ever, like, he shouldn't be allowed to be a crossing guard in an elementary school. Uh, you know, we all know that that would lead to the mass deaths of many children because he's incompetent and incapable and cares for no one but himself. And if the last four years taught us anything, they taught us that. He only cares about himself. And the fact that the Republican Party is so much more concerned about, you know, about how Donald Trump feels about them than they are about what is right and what is wrong. Well, maybe we don't need a Republican Party anymore. Anyway, shocked, dismayed, deeply disappointed, not surprised, not surprised. I've seen this Republican Party just continually over the last several years. And the, when they had a choice between, you know, things which are objectively morally correct and things which are objectively morally bankrupt, they have chosen the morally bankrupt so much more often. So I'm not surprised. Oh, God. I was surprised by that lava, I'll tell you that much. Ugh. Stay. Stay, Michael. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Saddened, shocked, alarmed. Who knows how long this video is. There aren't any other ways to say it. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see if we continue to have an America. In the meantime, Minecraft. Ha 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 ha, Minecraft. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna end this video because it's depressing.